So let's get started. I'm going to log on as a student who hasn't logged on before on this PC here. So the username is going to be the first three letters of the first name, first three letters of the surname. And the password is one, two, three, four, five, as usual. Okay. So in the beginning, you'll be asked to change your password. So put in the old password and put in the new. I just did two, three, four, five, six, just to be quick. Save changes, and then continue. Now we have to go through the privacy notice, scroll to the bottom, and just click next. Again, more cookie policy, Scroll to the bottom, next. And finally, we just have to click agree and agree to the Moodle cloud. Click next. End the tour, don't do that. It shows me available courses to me. So it shows me my available courses. So I can jump into this Italian test I don't want to do the tour. So this one was closed, but this new one is open. So I'm going to join that. And as you can see, the teacher is already on this page. And it says there is one moderator. So I'm going to join the session. Remember to accept the microphone and you have to click which microphone, maybe you have two. I have two, so I'm gonna click the normal microphone and say remember. Then I listen out for an echo. You need to be patient for this. One, two. That's a bit annoying, but it's because we're in the same room. Right. The microphones are muted. And we're both seeing the page that the teacher wants you to work on. Notice here in the bottom left corner, if you wanted, you could actually download whatever the teacher has sent you. And you can see here it is. So if I wanted to, I could simply click up here and download this article here. So we won't do that. Now, Let's see what happens when the teacher changes the image. So as a teacher, I'm going to click this fit to width. And you can see we both have the width and it's quite good. Now I'm going to put my camera on to see if that changes anything. Again, you have to remember the camera starting. And now my camera is available, slowly it comes onto the other screen. And you can see it's taken up some real estate. Now, the teacher, you notice, has put the face in the middle, but nothing has happened on the student's site. If the student wants, the student can also drag the teacher's face into the middle. So if I decide to put mine at the top again, you can see what does change is the width of the page. That can be quite unfortunate. And also if the teacher decides to do this, you can see the page size changes as well. 
So as teachers, we have to be aware of this. However, it is good because I can focus the student on which part of the page to look at. So in this first one, I want to do this reading and it's up to the student here on the left to move that picture out of the way. So he can move the picture out of the way. Remember, if you want, you can drag it to the top again. Or you can just drag it inside the picture, which is quite nice. So what more can we do? In this, there's a choice between A, B and C. Now the teacher can click here and make a poll. And when that comes up, he chooses A, B, C. And on the teacher's side, we have this. On the student side, you have the choice between A, B and C. And that student chose A, and I can see the result here, A, on my screen. And then I can publish the result, which you can only see if I make the page small again. And there you can see the results at the bottom. And as a teacher, I can clear those results. Now, I'll go back to this width. As a teacher, I probably won't keep it like this. And the student will have to perhaps make it full page to enjoy the benefits because many other students don't have a Windows PC and therefore they will see if, if we do this, that will be very tiny to them. And so therefore it's advised that the teacher keeps it like this and zooms in accordingly as he wishes. So for the student, the teacher has made it large and can read it and the student himself can also make it large. What is interesting is that I can give the students the ability to write in these areas. So for this one, I am going to make it a bit wider and we'll see why this can affect those who use a phone. But here I'm gonna click on allow users to write and draw. And as you can see here, the user can click on the pen and start writing here. The user can change the color and I can see the user's name. Also, what I wanted to try and explain to the users is that if you want to draw a text or you want to write a text, you have to come here and what you have to do is, as you can see here, left click the mouse and drag a square, let go, and then you can type inside. Click outside and there you can see and there you can see you have written. So let's do that again. Left click, drag. It doesn't matter what size you drag it as, but let go and type. Other things the uh, student can do. He can draw lines saying this word is the same as this word, etc. He can make the pen thicker if he wishes. Probably the thinnest is the best. And he can eliminate his own or her own drawings. So if I say which word don't you understand, they can say, well, what's this word? And what's this phrase mean? and they can circle certain words and then they can delete whatever they wrote. So that's how it works on a PC. You can also do a public chat or shared notes and the student can write, hi, 
And the teacher can also write hi. And any information. Also as a student, you can click on your icon here and set your status as confused or thumbs down if you're not uh, enjoying it. So maybe set the status as uh, away if you decide to walk away from the computer. So let's say happy. Now at any time, you can unmute your microphone. So you can unmute. You so now the student talks and the name lights up here of who talks. So let's... Stop the student, and it's the same for the teacher. Next, some more things the teacher might do. The teacher can actually share his screen. So, if I show you on very soon, I'm going to press share my screen because I have the book here on two pages, and I'd like to show that. So. I press share my screen. I'm going to select entire screen. And as you can see, it starts spinning. So don't worry. And then the teacher has to click on what he wants to show. So now I can show much more and I can flick through a book that I was using. Or I could show a, uh, a YouTube video, but also we can embed videos. So with this, the teacher can do a lot more by sharing his screen. So I'm now going to unshare my screen. Remember when you log out as a student to go to the top and simply log out. You are